Hello and welcome to the Cohen Review. I'm Ms. Cohen. Today's topic, understanding the differences between Weber and Ryan tests and sensory versus conductive hearing loss. This content is valuable for medical professionals and most importantly, to my fellow NPs who are preparing for board examinations. Let's dive in. Here are the differences between conductive versus sensory neural hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss occurs when sound waves are blocked or reduced in intensity as they travel through the outer ear, eardrum, or middle ear. Causes, think of an object obstructing the flow of sound. An example, uh, fluid in the middle ear from cold or allergies, ear infections like otitis media or externa, benign tumors, cerumen, or an object stuck in the ear, such as a child inserting a pebble in the ear. How about a problem with how the outer or middle ear are formed? Some people are born without an outer ear. Some may have a deformed ear canal or have a problem with the bones in the middle ear. Sensory neural hearing loss occurs when damage or dysfunction affects the inner ear, the hair cells, or the auditory nerve, disrupting the sound signal transmission to the brain. Causes, think of nerve disruption or the disruption in the conduction of the sound, kind of like an electrical malfunction. For example, Meniere's disease or autotoxic drugs, damaging the cochlea or the auditory nerve. Next, let's explore the differences between the Weber and the Rhine test. Weber and Rhine test result interpretation. Let's start with the Rhine test. The way you perform this test is first by checking bone conduction, and you do so by striking the tuning fork gently on a hard surface to produce a clear ringing sound. You then place that vibrating tuning fork on the patient's mastoid process, which is right behind the ear. And then you ask the patient when he can no longer hear the sound. You then check for air conduction, and you do so by immediately placing that vibrating tuning fork near the external auditory canal, about one or two inches away. Then you ask the patient again to report if they can still hear the sound. And that is how you perform the Rhine test. The Weber test is performed by striking the tuning fork gently on that hard surface to produce the ringing sound. You place the vibrating tuning fork over the midline of the patient's head, typically on top of the head right about over here. Then you ask the patient to report which ear the sound is louder or if it's equal in both ears. You record the patient's response noting whether the sound is either one, not lateralizing or is staying in the midline, which will translate into a normal result. Two, there's conductive hearing loss if it lateralizes to the affected ear. Or three, there is sensory neural hearing loss if it lateralizes to the good ear. Did I lose you yet? Stay with me because the next slide will show you what I just said and simplify it further. Now, let's dive into the fun part, interpreting the actual results of the Weber and the Rhine. Let's review the possibilities, and I'll make sure to explain everything in a way that it's easy to understand and remember. So please leave a comment and let me know if I succeeded or not. Okay, so here's the deal. If the Rhine test shows air conduction is greater than bone conduction, and the Weber shows no lateralization, then congratulations, you have normal results or no hearing issues. If you remember this for the results interpretation alone, you are all set for the nurse practitioner boards. Because if you remember what is normal, then you know how to recognize what is abnormal. If the Rhine test shows bone conduction is greater than air conduction, then we know there is conductive hearing loss in the ear. The air sound has been blocked by something. And whatever it is, it will vibrate intensely when we perform the Weber test, amplifying the vibrations. And that's why the Weber test will show lateralization to the affected ear. Now, if the Rhine test is normal, remember that air conduction is greater than bone conduction, we can rule out conductive hearing loss. 
So if the Weber test shows lateralization, it confirms there's a hearing issue. If the lateralization goes to the unaffected ear, it means there's sensory neural hearing loss. The affected ear won't be producing the Weber vibrations very well. And that's all. You may want to rewind and hear this again. Sometimes it takes two or three times until it clicks and finally makes sense.